12th of October 2016. Is it the 12th today? I think it was probably. I think yeah. it is. And here I am uh, doing the first of many, hopefully, which is like a video blog for Longwall Records here in Cainshire. Wonderful. 36 Tavern Street, PS31 1, 1EH. Nice to meet you, Mike. Nice to meet you, yeah. Uh, obviously, I've met you before, but I'm saying that just for uh, a little bit of a laugh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you've written this book, which I've recently read, called. Scooters. Yes, it's a fantastic title by the way, Thank I thought it was much. fantastic. Um, I've read it in about an hour and a half, maybe two hours. I'm not a, a really qu quick quick reader, I, I do grasp things quite quickly when I enjoy them. That is why I've read this quite quickly, because I thoroughly enjoyed it. I thought it was a fantastic reason from start to finish. Oh good, well, um, it, it was meant to be reasonably short because um, I didn't want to bore people to be quite uh, honest. And it was a long time ago, so I, I had to try and uh, bring all these memories back. Uh, yeah. Some were quite emotional, um, some were fun to remember, yeah. uh, but all in all it's been a really good process. To be quite well, I, what it did for me, I, be, I was brought up in, in North Bristol, similar to you, I was brought up in South Mead, a little bit younger than you, I don't want to point that out. You know? Although you look, <laughs> you, much better than me. Hair, you look much better than me. <laughs> um, the fact that it made me revisit certain things within my mind around the music scene, the mod scene, the punk scene, oh, all those different that. emotions were, uh, you know, re energized up. and it's brilliant because it made me realize the world in those days was a little bit of a better place in some aspects, musically. We weren't all just plugged into the same being as it were, like nowadays, everyone, it seems to be there's no avant-garde, you know, how would you describe it? I, I think you're right, but I think because you were younger, you were living in a completely different world mm. to what your parents were, because mm. when my um, mother read the book, mm she said she didn't know any of this was going on Existed. so, so yeah. i assume she was having the same experiences at the time as i was yeah but, but she wasn't obviously she wasn't going to the pubs or the clubs yeah. and fighting yeah, yeah, yeah. but i thought she saw all the violence that i did yeah. it became quite clear that she didn't yeah so for me uh, to write the book go back um 30 odd years uh was to see how much things had changed without us actually realizing well and, uh, the, the the other thing which you brought up in the book which i absolutely loved was where you described going to the pubs, all the local pubs, the names of the pubs, and the bouncers, and how the police had a massive involvement on youth culture oh, absolutely. back in the 70s and yeah, early yeah, 80s. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we both know policing in those days was pretty brutal. Well, well somebody said to me, because I interviewed a few people for the book, and, and said, well, of course, what the police would do in those days, there was no prevention. Yeah. They were quite happy to let the young people uh, almost kill themselves yeah. and then go and pick the pieces up. They, and I write about that in there. There was no interest really in, in stopping it. Mm. I remember being on Bristol uh, Centre and, and people walking around with machetes, mm. uh, baseball bats, yeah. primarily because uh, the Warriors film had yeah. come out and there was the baseball yeah, yeah, furious. Yeah. And nobody was going over to them and saying, you know, that's a lethal weapon. Yeah. Water. But if that happened now, it'd probably be front page news. Exactly. In those yeah. days, it, it was quite common. It was yeah. very common. But, and also, the, the thing which made me excited was the way you described the clothing. Because as a, a youth being brought up in Southfield in the late 70s, yes. You know, there was a lot of poverty around. I didn't have access to, to clothing, but like you explained, when you did, yes, from from, from where you were a little bit of a different upbringing, but you still cherished your clothes, didn't you? Oh, very much so. And yeah. and, that, and that was a big part of the book for me as well. I, I visualised you looking really smart and cool. All the things that I really wanted to be when I was a little <laughs> scruffy little <laughs> yeah. little little, little well, scro. Well, in those days, some of us uh, weren't as cool <clears throat> as others. Some took the whole mod revival thing yeah. very seriously as John Andrews mentioned in there. Mm. We were, as the book suggests, as punks on scooters. We yeah. had such a good time being punk rockers. And then the new wave thing came yeah. and the record companies took over uh, and started to uh, dilute it somewhat. And yeah. of course, some of the bands- Money who, got involved, who, basically. Exactly, yeah. who I wouldn't mention because I know it upsets a lot of people, but mm. some of them um, were suddenly stylized by the record companies, yeah. the Crack America yeah. and all that. And that wasn't what we'd got into it yeah. for. Yeah. So we were hanging around waiting for something exciting. You know, we love going out every Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday night to see uh, bands. Well, re well, really what you did, from me reading the book, what I feel, and you might not feel this way, um, but you almost created that style. You created that movement within Bristol, within that area. You were part of something like, you know, I can reflect and think I was I was a rude boy, I was a skinhead, you know, I was yeah, into yeah. that. But really I was a mod at heart because yes. I wanted to be smart, I wanted to be cool and trendy, but I couldn't I was I was just a little bit too late for that. But I think you by the by the sound of it, you were part of the creation of that. Which which made me feel really 
yeah. and, you know, excited that, this, I, I, that you've written a book. I, absolutely. I was part of it, but in those days, it was so popular. The model for revival was something that really took off very quickly. Yeah. And you could go into Bristol City Centre, Bristol yeah. uh, Broadmead, and it was just a massive green park yeah. everywhere. Fish tails. Uh, everywhere. Yeah. So, and, but what, and fish But what happened, once the novelty wore off, um, there was just a few of us mm. uh, remaining. And then it went into being, the, the thing I'm more proud about, really, was, was the creation of the subculture of the scooter board. Yeah. Be, because that was completely new. Whereas yes, the mod was. revival yeah. was sort of like a, a version of the 1960s thing, yeah. hence the word revival. Yeah. The scooter board is something completely different. Yeah. Completely different. Well, it's like you described it, going from the really smart, trendy, tight clothes to the military style clothes. and. Yeah, well, well travelling long and, uh, distances and sleeping in tents yeah. and getting drunk all the time yeah. really <laughs> didn't suit having boating blazers yeah, right, and jam yeah. shoes yeah. and things like that. So it, it became practical really to yeah. have combat trousers. And of course there were films around at the time, if I remember rightly, which is probably Apocalypse Now I think was around about then. Yes. And, yeah, uh, and the boys from Company C yes. and all those things. So that was quite inspirational for us because they look really yeah, cool, yeah. really cool. So we, we, we sort of dressed like that. Uh, and travelled around all around the country. And, uh, and that's the thing, what you don't get in modern day culture, I find. There's a lot of good things about modern day culture and youth culture and stuff like that. But for me, and I think a lot of people of our era, we tend to go back to the, the, the mid to late 70s, early 80s Absolutely. for that yeah, yeah, fruition yeah, yeah, yeah. of those ideas and, and, and music. So go on to that. As well as the book, is this fantastic CD with 21 tracks on it. Which is playing now, funny enough. Exactly. In the What's the chance of that happening? I'd like to have it on a little bit louder, but unfortunately, it would drown out our uh, amazing conversation. Which might be a good thing. Yeah, well, we'll see later. <laughs> um, I won't edit that. Uh, so, Bristol Archive Records yeah, decided is, that yeah. they wanted to um, make a CD of all the Bristol bands that they thought were worthy enough mm. um, to go on the CD, uh, obviously. And I, I, when I first heard it, I wasn't too sure, but the more I've heard it, it's one of those CDs that actually I think they got it right. It, there's not a bad track on that. It's I've got to be good. honest, you know, a lot of these bands I've, I've heard of and probably not listened to, but all together as a collection of songs, I don't think it's a bad one on it no. for me personally. Absolutely. It's very upbeat. And it's quite eclectic as exactly. well. It goes from Scooter Boy, exactly, it goes yeah. to Mob, the Sky in yeah. there, even probably hints of reggae. Now yeah, and, again, and, and, and I think this on vinyl would be amazing. It'd be a massive seller yeah, for me I, in this I, shop. I, I think it would be. A, uh, really you know, good and um, you know, already uh, I've sold a few copies every weekend since since speaking to you last week. And you know, the, some of the bands on there, the, the the songs are just so, like I said, that'd be fantastic. But not too punky as well, if you know what I mean. They can cover all bases. I, I, I think when you hear some of the modern revival bands, how mm. dreadful they were, because some of them were really were dreadful. They? And yeah, they, yeah. But they were London based, they got recording. Right, okay, yeah. Some of the bands on it are far superior are they? to the yeah. London based bands that got recorded. How most of the bands on there never got onto vinyl, I, I never know. Well, I suppose in Bristol, in those days, no, we had to try harder, didn't we? Yeah, yeah, because yeah. Because everything yeah. was London and or, or, yeah, or, yeah. Or, um, or Manchester. So in Bristol, you had to really work your, you know, yeah. to, to get anywhere. Well, so there, probably... Cassettes were around a bit later on, so people were releasing stuff on cassette mm. and stuff like that. Yeah. But I, I just think if some of those bands had been in London, yeah. they would have got recording deals. Yeah. It's just that they were actually, I think um, John Andrews in the, in the book, I think, mentions that they were actually offered by uh, the management of Status Quo yeah. um, uh, to have a recording deal, I think it was. But because it was Status Quo, they didn't want anything to do with it and turned it down. Yeah. But um, I'd just like to say what a fantastic read that was for okay. me personally. And I just think it was, a lot of people will find it a fantastic read. Also, with the CD with the 21 tracks on. Which so they can hear the music, music. Exactly. mentioned in the book. And then they yeah. can take a little walk, walk or trip down memory lane. Yeah. But it's been fantastic meeting you, Mike. And, and you. Um, thank you, thank you very much for agreeing to this. Thank you very and much. And then um, all the best for the future. Right, thank, thank you, you very much. much. Thank you. Cut.